Hello, cool cats and kittens. How are you guys doing today? Uh, so this is, I think, episode two of our quarantine series for now. Um, as always, joined by the hostess with the mostesses, Sarah Bennett and CJ McCree from Milwaukee. What is up, you guys? How are you guys holding up since we last saw each other? Who? Anything? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> What's up, peeps? <laughs> Is there anything, anyone, yeah. nothing, same? Alrighty, so. Same old, same old. Same old, same old, okay, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm rewatching. I'm rewatching Community, so right now that's why I'm going to cool, cool, cool. I've been, I'm on season three, and it went live, I think, on Friday. So, yeah, alright. So we're going to start with the top five movie villains that we have. Um, this was CJ's idea. So CJ, would you like to start us off with your, we're going to go, so we're, we're going we're gonna to go from our, Mine aren't, mine, aren't, mine aren't ranked, so I'm just going to go with what I have from the bottom to the top. All right? All right. <laughs> All right, so top five movie villains. This is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. As you can see, I'm wearing a freaking villain's shirt here. That is <laughs> the reverse flash, one of my favorite villains, actually, um, comic book villains. But that's not what our list is about. It's about movie villains. Um, and I'm quite certain. <laughs> I'm quite certain. If this character was in the movie, he would not be in this list because I have no faith in a Flash movie. But um, <laughs> what? I will start here with, um, but no, um, I re I'm a huge villain fan. I know uh, Renee knows this. Um, I a villain, a movie that's like not awesome can be saved, in my opinion, if it has an awesome villain. Like I can, I would love a lame movie with an awesome villain in it. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. Like. It'll completely save it. I love villains. Um, anyways, <laughs> let me just mm -hmm. enough uh, babbling. My number five. Um, my number five top villain. This is not necessarily. It's a bit of a subtle villain, all right? And also the way I did my my list. Uh, it's uh, my villain is from a specific movie, because um, uh, a lot of my villains are in multiple movies or in multiple. Uh, movies in their uh, franchises. So my number five is a corporation. It's called the Wayland yutani Corporation. Um, <laughs> what is that? What is that? What is that? Yes. that is, uh, as Sarah did get it, um, as those of you in the know, those of you not, you will know, um, Wayland yutani Corporation, they are the shadowy corporation that's be basically behind uh, sending these weird sketchy salvage operations out to locations that are curiously next to uh, alien breeding grounds <laughs> because um, basically they're the, the shadow corporation behind all the alien movies and now the uh, what's that what was the prequel uh, uh, Prometheus Prometheus yes yes uh, alien movies um, and my choice for movie that they're the villain of is the second Alien film. That's Aliens um, by James Cameron. And the reason I chose that um, is because they're shown to be there. It's kind of like a twist that they're the villain in, in part one or throughout the movies. It's like this kind of known twist. Like we all know that who's behind it, but it's kind of like it kind of, you know, it's like a twist that pops up for the main characters usually. Um, but it's like, you know, their goal ha is always to capture um, but xenomorph um, it, to capture a live one so they can you know experiment on it or whatever it's a perfect it. yeah you know what I mean whatever science dudes want to do with some kind of life form that's you know that's what they're trying to do was that really um, their goal I never the knew that I never knew that's what they were doing I just know it was the aliens attacking the humans was that really their goal the whole time yeah, yeah the, um, they keep sending them out to these sites where they've discovered them that makes yeah, and now I and like, went to film school. <laughs> All right. <yeah. laughs> and it's always like a surprise. Like, they never tell them that there's, like, aliens there. You know what I mean? There's always just like, oh, hey, you're going on a mining trip. Or, hey, you're going to, like, salvage this ship. Or this ship is a distress signal or something. You know what I mean? Like, um, but the reason I chose Aliens 2, because, in, you know, in Aliens 1, in Alien 1, you know, they, they discover that ship. And they're, um, you find out that the, uh, the android on the ship... Um, has kind of been orchestrating things to 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 make this fail catastrophically, so that you know they can 
so that they can, you know, capture the alien and bring it back to the corporation. But Alien 2, Aliens, shows the depths that they're willing to stoop to mm -hmm. to um, see their mission through. Because um, Alien 1, it's like they failed. And Ripley, um, famously, you know, famous heroine of the Alien franchise, she makes it out alive. But then, then two, when two starts, you see that, you know what I mean, people don't believe her story. Um, people think they're kind of skeptical of her, but they still want to send her on this mission um, because she's the one with uh, the most knowledge of what happened before, you know what I mean? But it's, but um, in Paul Reiser, um, star of Mad About You, <laughs> is like the, is the representative of, of the corporation in part two. And you see that he, not, a, not, a, not an android, he, a human, is like trying to orchestrate the, trying to sabotage the mission, um, and with with Ripley being the uh, the only the the only witness from the first one, it's like they're trying to get rid of her, cover their tracks, and capture the alien. So it's kind of like their despicableness goes to like a deeper level, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so like that's why I chose aliens, and that's why I chose the Wayland Yutani Corporation for their. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Sarah, thoughts on, on, on CJ's pick? And then, and then we'll go to and then your, your fifth pick. Yeah, so I think once we get further in my list, we might find that me and CJ have some things in common. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. I, I, I went, we'll go to my, my, my number uh, when, I, when our list coincide later. But I definitely agree that, uh, you know, there's some definite villains in, in the in the Alien series. All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, I've only seen the two, one and two. I haven't seen, everyone's told me to avoid three, avoid four. Um, so I haven't seen them, but, because everyone's like, don't they watch it enough. fun. Before they bring back Ripley, because she, I, I don't, I don't think I'm ruining it for anyone. She, she dies and, and the Yeah, isn't she a clone? Like, isn't that where, like, they, it's, they clone her with the alien, so she's like half alien. It's, I, it's, Fun. Like it's not a good movie, but it's fun. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. I completely agree with what she says. Yes. <laughs> All right, let me... I feel like I honestly feel like four is the worst alien movie, but like I like it more than other alien movies. Though. Like... All right, let me ask you: this. Is it the Spider-Man three of the Alien franchise? No, no, no way. No. <laughs> It's more like the like, Super Mario think... Brothers of the Alien franchise. Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't like the third one the most because it's too, like, meta. Like, a lot of it's, like, a mental, like, let's discover ourselves, like, very slow, like... Isn't that a David Fincher? It's not an action movie. Wasn't that David Fincher's first movie? I don't know. I, I, I know it's one of... I think, yeah. Um, all right. All right, cool, cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, Sarah, you're number, you're number five villain. My number five pick. Um, I'm going from a different sci-fi universe, and I said the Terminator <gasps> um, because I love him. So <laughs> let, let, let's clar let's clarify which Terminator: the T800, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. One. Okay, cool, cool. I I do like the melty one, um, but the Arnold one is just it's so classic. Um, he has some of the best film lines. Um, I like when they show things from his point of view, like his robot point of view. Um, and he's just such a force of nature, I think. And then um, I actually like his reincarnations in the later movies, too, because sometimes I, I like villains that aren't all bad. Like, no. I think, like, like, you're suspicious of them because you can never prove that they're good, but, like, they change him in a way that, that makes it okay. Like... Like, you're like, oh, my God, is he really good? But, like, he's evil, and he has all this power, and, yeah. No, that is, that, that is, that, that's, that's a great choice. I forgot, because I was just looking at my DVDs. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have to. I forgot. I, it's weird to me to think of the Terminator as a villain, because every other outing he's had since that movie, he's been a hero. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to think yeah. of him as a villain. Um, but the Terminator's a great choice. Um, no, I, 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 it's, it is, it is really is a good one. It's a great one, mm -hmm. but I think I think the T one thousand is better than him because he was just so equally relentless, and then he was just what? What was that line in uh? They're calling they're calling his foster parents. And he goes, "What is uh, your?" He goes, "Your parent, your parents are dead, or what?" Yeah, CJ. I I don't remember. 
Um, yeah, I completely agree. Um, the Terminator is, um, well, this, that term, that, yeah, the, the Terminator is on my, uh, what do you call that list? Yeah, the, whatever, honorable mentions. Right. Because he's such a perfect villain and the perfect idea of what I feel like for a villain. And like you said, Sarah, our list is going to match up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Did, did you guys, like, conference before this happened at all? Or just, just serendipity? Great minds. Mm-hmm. And so do you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> all right. Renee, what's your number five? So my number five is, this is not a sci-fi movie. This is a from a Coen Brothers movie, actually. And it is Anton Sugar from North Country for Old Men. The main bad guy. And I picked him because I was, well... First of all, like, what could I pick from these great villains? And so, it was just him, his menacing. He is, his, I guess, he's kind of a Terminator in real life, if that makes any sense. Um, and then that one scene where he's at the gas station, and he comes up with that little bullet thing, and he goes, call it amigo. And he goes, like, you, you die or you live. I'm like, and he was just so relentless. Um, that's why I chose him, because he was just so menacing, so, so... I, he was just so real. It was really scary that someone was just that. And if I remember correctly, I haven't seen it in a while. I have the DVD. I should watch it. Um, but wasn't he like a hired killer? Or was he just, was there a reason he was hunting them down? I'm pretty sure he was a hitman. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, no, but that, that, that's who I have. Um, so yeah, so, but uh, yeah, that's, that's my number five for now. Yeah, he is like the best weapon. I think that really makes him for me. Yeah, that was like, just uh, yeah, like, um, what the frack is that? Holy shit! Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, that, that that that's why I picked him. Um, because he it, it was between him and I think the Joker might be a male legend, but I'm like, nah, this is more real. Like this is more fun for me for some reason than the Joker. He's my honorable mention. All right. Yeah, he was. He was on my honorable mention list uh, um, from No Country from Old Men. I did, uh, you know, that's one thing I really love in a villain is someone that you can fear. You know yeah. what I mean? Someone that strikes fear into you for the main character. You know what I mean? Um, and that's something. Um, so let, let me let that lead me into number four, um, which isn't the best example of that, what I just said on this list. But... Um, he deserves this list in nonetheless. So I'm hopping genres now. Um, t- and this character, this isn't his only movie, and he's not the villain of this movie, but he is a villain in this movie. Um, he does. He gives a great performance in anything that he's in. Um, he's a character that people love and know. It's from a horror movie, and this character is Sir Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> and that is, and this movie is in Silence of the Lambs. Um, excellent performance. Excellent. Here's here's a portrait of a character who is a villain, who's not the villain of this movie, but is like, he connects so like emotionally and intellectually with not only the audience, but the main character in the film. Um, to the point where he's very subversive. You don't really know notice his villainy, and that's like what's so scary about him, because it's like he's just this intelligent, like well mannered dude, well mannered guy who is really just underneath it all, just planning the whole time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and yes, he's helping the good guy, but he's also got his own agenda. You know, and he shows himself. You know what makes a villain a guy who shows himself to be a threat? You know what I mean? To other characters in the movie, and he shows himself to be a threat. He breaks out of the jail, and even at the end, there's, like, this sort of uneasy teaser as, you know, he got away, he's gone, like, in that character that you see, like, he's gonna kill that dude, you know what I mean? Like, it's, like, in a sense, like, well, he's just a really good villain, you know what I mean? And and he gives gives a chilling performance. Um, He goes on to become more of a villain in other movies, but it's this movie um, that basically really shows off um, where America kind of fell in love with hating this character, Sarah, thoughts on Hannibal Lecter? And you have an Hannibal Lecter. Um, he's actually on my honorable mentions list. So, <laughs> uh, again, we have a lot of crossover going on. Um, I, I think he, he makes a great villain because he's very sophisticated. Like, 
it's not like one of those like slash and grab kind of ones. I mean, I, all villains are great in their own way, but he what makes him great is that he's very like smart, very intelligent and methodical in how he he enacts his villainy. So no, so yeah, so it, it, he's also on my honorable mentions. Um, but it's it's it. What I find it, it it's he's very eloquent, he's very well well spoken. Um, but it's his charm that I feel that it's kind of that his his, his dangerous. That'll lure, lure, lure the villain and lure it in his, his prey at, and that's kind of what I'm like. That's what's what's scary. It's very, very, it's very charming. He's very, he can have you eating out of your, out of your hand, and the way Anthony Hopkins does it, um, is really it, it, it's. It, the first time I saw that movie, I was like, I forget how I was a kid, and I'm like, I couldn't watch it, but um, when he did this, <laughs> that just scared the hell out of me. Um, but no, it, it, he's he's a great choice. No, he's a, um, he's he's that. I want to watch that movie again. Um, but no, yeah, he's honorable mention. So, Sarah, you're, uh, you're number My four. My number four. Um, yeah, so we have all these great villains. Like, we've been talking about conflicted villains and the villains that, you know, are smart. And then sometimes you just have to have your villains that are just, you know, expendable. And there's <laughs> numerous of them. So, for number four, I put down Nazis from the <laughs> Indiana Jones series. <laughs> from what because series? The Indiana Jones Nazis, because okay. they just keep coming at them, and I don't care how many Harrison Ford takes out, they're just great. Like, the, the more that he can plow through on his uh, treasure quests, the the better. Um, uh, so, yeah, Nazis, because you have no sympathy for them, there's nothing redemptive about them, and, and you're just glad to watch him take them out. <laughs> CJ, thoughts? You know, the, the greatest thing about Indiana Jones and Nazis is how smug they are. Yes! Like, who doesn't love to see a smug Nazi get punched in the face? I mean, like, that is... I mean, come on. It's a perfect villain. <laughs> they are sexy Nazis, too. It was that one, uh, the one in Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, the lady. The Last Crusade one. The one, the... She goes, come, Indy. Let's take it together. I'm like... I don't know what I would do if I were hitting his shoes because she's so pretty. You would have died, sir. You would have died. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, yeah, I would have died. I probably would have died. Yeah, she I would have sleeping with him and his dad. Like <laughs> it's twenty. Yeah. It's twenty twenty. Whatever. <laughs> no, that, 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 no, I, 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 all right. Yeah. So who did he fight in? Oh, in the fourth, the one that didn't happen. Was it the Russians? I don't speak about that movie. I don't oh. know. <laughs> that was not an Indiana Jones movie. That was like something fan, out of... That was, a, that was a fanfic. We'll call that a fanfic. Um, yeah. Another film that we do not talk about. <laughs> I, I saw that movie once and decided I would never want to see it again. But, um, no, I, 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 said I love the original three Indiana Jones. All right. That, you know, and the Nazis that just are <laughs> cannon fodder. <laughs> yep. All right, so that's your number four. Okay. I forgot about those ones. All right, so my number my number four is kind of an animal, kind of not. It's kind of an animal, kind of a monster. It's the raptors from Jurassic Park, the first one. Just because they are so freaking smart. They are so freaking intelligent. And the way they, they move and then the little thump. The little things just carried away. Um, they surrounded uh, that hunter, and he got him down. And then the kitchen scene in that still scares the frack. I remember when I was I saw it when I was seven years old in Mexico, and apparently I didn't know I did this, but my co my cousin said that uh, I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this again. I don't remember doing that, but apparently I did it. Um, but yeah, because that. To this day, I'm still I still get I know they get out fine, but I still get touched with the Raptors. I'm like, and the and the one and two of their and then, so, they're my favorite villains, um, and then they come to Jurassic World and that happens, but yeah, those are those those are my villains for number four. Um, as far as yeah, the Raptors go, like, like I mean, Jurassic Park is pretty much like a kids horror movie, you know what I mean? Like, so like. <laughs> They're, like, really masters at, like, building suspense in that movie, you know what I mean? And it's, like, there are mo moments that are so intense. And I've told you this story, Renee, so I'll tell it on the, on the flag. But, like, when I saw 
you know, I mean, when we were younger, like, it took forever for movies to come out on video, you know what I mean, yeah. for you to own. And so I went to see Jurassic Park with my family, like, as, like, pre-second grade, I think, pre-second grade, yeah, in, like, the summer. And, like, mm. <laughs> I yeah. see this movie in that part with the raptors, like, I actually did shut my eyes, you know, mm. I did, I shut my eyes, and then, like, when I looked, like, you know, they, they had never gotten away, and, like, I didn't know what happened, you know, and, like, I asked my brother, asked my sister, <laughs> asked my older brother, asked my younger sister, and they're both making fun of me because, like, I covered my eyes, but they saw what happened, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it took me, like, I don't know how long it took to get on video, like, it seemed like a year or two, you know what I mean? It, like, I think and then, it was and, a and, year. Like, until I actually finally saw how they got out of that, but <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they were really great villains, though. Um, they Thompson. kill Sam Jackson, don't they? Isn't that how he? Yes, does? it is. That's the right. One of his movie deaths. Yep. Yeah. He does not hold on to his butt. <laughs> no, yeah. he does not. But he has a cigarette on, though. I think. <laughs> um, all right, CJ. Who is? What is your number three? Oh, that phone back open there. All right, my <laughs> number three is a popular one. I he 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 was on this list. He was off this list. He was on this list. He was off this list. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Freaking, he's on this list. He's, he ended up on this freaking list, um, and that is Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, the Joker was was bound to make it on this list in some form because the Joker is one of my favorite villains. Period. Um, like comic book villains, uh, might be my favorite. Man, eh, maybe not. I don't know. I, I think about that later. But he's he's one of my favorite villains. But he's on this list. Because of what he does to the hero in the movie that he's in. Um, because he takes Batman to a place that Batman didn't feel like he should have had to go on in order to, de to defeat him. He takes him to a place where Batman's like, oh, I see what I have to become to be defeat men like him. Like, I don't want to do this. He takes Batman to a place where he, after this movie, quit being Batman. <laughs> like, <laughs> he freaking, like... He took him, he defeated, he took the White Knight, like, he made Batman, like, he, he made Batman absorb the hate of the city so that Batman was the villain. Uh, um, he took the White Knight that was supposed to be their, save, their way to save Gotham and turned him evil, you know what I mean? Yeah. And made, then made Batman and what, Commissioner Gordon and the leaders of the city basically lie to everyone about what happened, you know what I mean? Like, Joker in all the senses of what he was trying to do, completed his task um, as a villain. You know what I mean? The villain, what makes villain a good villain is that a villain has like a mission and they're trying to do that mission. And the hero has a mission and they're trying to do that mission. And their missions kind of, co you know what I mean, stop each other. One, only one can do that. You know what I mean? And this movie is a great example of um, that great hero and villain relationship, you know what I mean? That, and that's why Joker is on this list. That's why Heath Ledger's Joker is on this list from The Dark Knight, um, because that villain accomplishes that goal. Um, yeah. Sarah, thoughts? Yeah. Um, actually, I, I have the Joker on my honorable mentions, but the Jack Nicholson Joker from um, the original uh, Batman. Right. 89 Batman. Um, the uh, Tim Burton's yeah. Batman, but I, I, I think the Joker is really great because I think a lot of Batman's about like mental illness, like yep. uh, dealing with the like actually trauma too. So I think the Joker's usually a foil for Batman, and like if Batman had gone, like if Bruce Wayne hadn't been able to put his energies into something more positive, kind of like an insane way that he could have gone. So. I I think the reflection really makes their like dynamic between the two of them um, something that's really interesting to watch. Um, though I like the Jack Nicholson one because he's kind of more goofy. Like there's a <laughs> scene where he's on the parade flight, he just pulls like a giant gun out of his pants, and there's just I like the silliness of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, so my joke is one of my favorite villains too. Um, but my joke so in film school I always said that I didn't like Jack Nicholson Joker. Because I thought he's doing Jack Nicholson. He's just, you know, mm -hmm. um, to me, I, w I would go, I would say Mark Hamill's my Joker until Heath Ledger. But Heath Ledger is a version of Heath Ledger for me. Heath Ledger Joker to me is an anarchist, which is a side of, of, of um, 
of uh of the Joker. Jack Nicholson's Joker is the Prince of Crime kind of, which is another side of of the Joker. Where I feel that Mark Hamill's is the anarchist, the Prince of Crime, the psychopath. So just to me, he is the one true Joker. N- till now, till now, for me, I don't know if we'll see anyone. Wasn't there another one recently? There've been two Jokers since then. Since he led your Joker. Well, there's yeah, the the, the the Joker movie. I haven't. Joker. I didn't see it. I I had no. Idea. I, it's very dark. I, I must say, I saw it and I found it very dark. So it reminded me of of, of um. Taxi Driver, like it was like a like a Taxi Driver with the Joker on it. Did you see? Have you seen Taxi Driver, Sarah? A long time ago. Okay, but yeah, no. So that that's uh, so that's CJ's number. Three. All right. Anything else before? Go ahead, CJ. Oh, and on a side note, uh, Jack Nicholson Joker is also on my honorable mention. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Cesar Romero from the Batman movie '66. No, it's not. All right, Sarah. Yeah, no, you're going to be one of those guys. Right? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> All right. So my number three. Yeah. Um, so again, we're having some overlap. My number three is actually the Xenomorph aliens from the movie. The alien movies, I, I just think they're so cool. Like the fact that they bleed acid and like, um, they're just so dominant in their attacks. And like the only way to kill them is basically to space them. So it's, it's just such a great um, villain to have to fight because you have to give it your all. And, and um, they're also very terrifying because we have, as humans, have no natural defense against them. Like, even guns are, like, kind of like, oh, I'm going to do my best. Um, and then I also like the fact that you can become a weapon yourself by, like, harboring it inside you. Um, as awful as that is, like, suddenly you know your friend's going to die um, because they have been not, like, impregnated from... Um, they're just so evil, like like you can know your death is coming. Um, that is so dark, Sarah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you want to add on before we before we have Uh Anything else about the Xenomorphs you want to touch on? Um, well, yeah, I, I would uh, agree that they are... Oh, what, was that on me or was yeah. that on her? <laughs> yeah, it's on you, it's on you. You're talking. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I... I think I think what makes the alien the xenomorphs such a magnificent bad guy <laughs> uh, is they're like okay so like you usually see the aliens in a time where like it's sci-fi like it's in the future where like technology is very far advanced and they represent like the apex of like natural evolution which is almost counter to technological evolution you know mm. what i mean like which is like man-made and we're like advanced and like through like you know well, microchips and whatever you know what i mean we're making everything quicker faster more you know efficient but they are kind of they have done sort of they're like the pinnacle of like natural evolution though you know what i mean like like she said like even though we have guns and we have all this stuff like i just touched my face and it's the covid season season but um, <laughs> even though we have guns have you not seen how much i've been doing this myself <laughs> But even though we have guns and stuff, all this stuff, it's like she said, it's like, it's all you can do just to survive against this thing that has evolved to kill whatever it needs to, like everything, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a sort of a, a, a human sized virus, I guess, sort of, you know what I mean? It just like spreads and kills and destroys. Um, but to touch on, on, on Sarah's point also about them evolving, like, didn't, didn't they, didn't more adapt to whatever it, whatever species it attached to, it would become that version of a version of that species? I see. That's like a from the Prometheus movies and all that stuff, and I don't really Is that like what that's, that, 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 that from? Part three, part three kind of touches on that. Yeah. <laughs> but the face hugger hugs a dog, and so, like, the uh, the, alien, the xenomorph is, like, bipedal in that one or whatever. Like, yeah. Or not bipedal, quadrupedal. 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 Okay. But, see, I, I don't necessarily like the direction that was... That was going in the movies. <laughs> All right, is it so? Is it canon or not canon then? Well, it's someone's canon. <laughs> it's not my canon. <laughs> so it's Sarah's not canon. It's not Sarah's canon. I I don't like it. I, I, I 
but again, that's that's me. <laughs> Hey, what's the name of the show? Frack, Frack the Cannon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say that, but CJ beat me to it. All right. Anything else before I go into my number three? No. All right. So my number three is everyone knows I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. Everyone knows I'm Catholic. So my favorite, my, my villains, I was like, because I was going to watch the movie again just for fun. I'm like, it's Bartleby and Loki from Dogma. And the fact that. Their mission is to go back home, which is heaven, no matter what. If they have to kill people, if they have to kill the last descendant, again, this is a movie, all right? It's a movie, people. Uh, Mom, yeah, uh, it's the last descendant of Jesus Christ. They're like, I don't give a frack. I will, I'm going home. Um, and they were relentless at that to the point where even, if I remember correctly, Bartleby was about to kill God, right? To go, to go, to go back home. Um, and... I like, I, I, I found that very, very... You haven't thought about the consequences of your re-entry! Consequences, schmonsequences. Guess what? We're going home, okay? No matter whose pride it may hurt. It's not a matter of pride, stupid! Loki, kill a girl. What, are you high? Do I it. can't kill her if she hasn't done anything. You know that. Fine, I'll kill her myself. <laughs> Fuck. Not inspirational, but very interesting. To, it kind of reminded... It, it, to me, it was akin to people's... A metaphor or analog for people's faith of, like, what they would do to pursue and push their agenda and faith um maybe i'm reading too much into it but they were to me that was a very 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 interesting uh, uh execution and the fact that there was two fallen angels who got kicked out of heaven for giving god the finger for, for getting too drunk uh was very funny to me and i'm like and then it just yeah those are my 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 number three villains bartleby and loki from dogma All right cj anything? yeah I, um yeah as you know that's what, that has that's been one of my favorite movies for a long time. Dogma. Um, I, I love that movie, and I do like those villains in it. I like um, the fact that, like, you know, I grew up in a, a Christian household and like went to a Christian school or whatever, and I like the fact that the story is all because you know Kevin Smith writes comic books. And the story is almost like a comic book writer's like sort of like it takes like a re- retcon approach to like the Bible. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, like, it like, is. It takes, is. like, little pieces out of the Bible, and it just kind of like, oh, it would be interesting if we put this in a comic book story. Like, um, like the idea of, like, um, like God is infallible, right? Like, God can't be proven wrong. God can't be wrong is, like, a thing that's in the that's in the Bible. Right. It's just kind of like, when it's said there, it's just like, oh, like, you know, God's never wrong. Right. But, but he, he has this, in the, it, he turns that into a loophole in the movie, basically, like, if you prove God wrong, then the world, the universe is over, kind of a thing, and, like, I love that, it's hilarious, you know what I mean, like. It, it's, yeah, no, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it is, I, I can't, that's why you are the Mark Bernardin right now, of to my Kevin Smith in this podcast. Sarah, thoughts? Have you seen Dogma, Sarah? Have you? I saw it once, maybe like fifteen years ago. So I don't really have a point of reference on it right now. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So that's what with the smiling Jesus, right? Like yes. The, <laughs> yes. Yes. Buddy so Christ. That's what, I re- that's what I remember about the movie. So unfortunately, <laughs> I don't really remember the bad guys in it. Uh, no, so I mean, I was like, I, I so I'm, I was really super Catholic, so to me, and it's very, it's very, to me, it spoke to a lot of, um, a lot of my questions, a lot of my doubts, um, in faith, and it, it didn't answer them, but it kind of like, all right, it addressed them a little bit, but I, I'm not the person that has, has these doubts, has these issues, um, but it, yeah, it's, um, I would recommend it, I mean, it, it's funny, but not it's a, it's a fun adventure, God, I'm getting fat, mm-hmm. um, alrighty, 